and welcome, I'm your Kudmaki. So here are some tips for making tuples games. It's actually something that is extremely important. This graph over here explains the problem. The number of developers by how many games they released. And as you can see, there's a massive amount that released one game, but you can see it drops off pretty massively from game one to game two. Meaning all of these games, so in this graph, that's what, about 28,000? 28,000 developers launch just one game and never actually launch their second game. This right here, this graph, this massive drop, this is a pretty big issue. And it's an issue because of what I wrote here. So one of the absolute most powerful, but often overlooked aspects of game development is simply experience. So many developers launch just one game and that's it. They quit the industry and do something else entirely, meaning they completely miss out on the massive amount of experience you gain from launching multiple games. And if this graph is really it, most developers make just one game, very few go out to make two games, and even fewer go out to make three, five, six, ten games. If you yourself have never released a game, believe me, you will gain an insane amount of experience by launching your first game, which in turn will then make launching your second game much, much easier, much, much better. That is why my advice is always make small games so you can make more games, which will give you tons of knowledge so you can improve more and more on each game you release. Basically, it is very, very unlikely, pretty much impossible, for you to make a masterpiece, for you to make a massively successful game on your very first game. That is extremely unlikely to happen. For example, everybody knows about Angry Birds. This game was a massive mega hit. And when it came out, there was some chatter about pretty much this exact topic. People saying how this game came out of nowhere and this developer suddenly made millions, or actually I think billions of dollars. But of course what people forget to realize is this was not their first game. So the developer behind Angry Birds, Rovio Entertainment, actually made over 50 games before the success of Angry Birds. So yeah, this is the one bit that a lot of people, like I said, overlook. Behind pretty much every massive hit that you see, there's a developer making a ton of games before they made that hit. So if you want to make successful games, that is why my best advice is make small games so you can make more games more quickly. Then one developer on Reddit posted a very interesting question. So for developers who released more than two games, what were the lessons from game one that you applied to game two? And if this was a very interesting question, very interesting thread that led to quite a lot of discussion, quite a lot of people giving their thoughts. So here are the most interesting answers. So first one is scope management. Before you finish your first game, you have no idea how quickly you can build your ideas. And after you finish your first game, you get a much better idea as to how long things actually take, which is always longer than you think. And if this is definitely, probably one of the biggest ones when it comes to beginners. When you are a beginner, you think a game, even a simple game, can be made in, let's say, a few hours, something like that. When in reality, especially for beginners, even a simple game, something like Flappy Bird, even that will take quite a bit of time. I spoke about, in my Game Dev Journey video, about how I started making Flash games and I made a ton of Flash games before I moved on to Steam games. But when I was making Flash games, when I was very much just a complete beginner, I made about two games that were very, very simple. And then for some reason on my third game, I decided, why don't I do a massive MMO? And I generally believe that I could build it. But of course, after like three months working on that, I finally realized this is way too much. I can't build this. So I definitely gave up on that idea. But that is definitely a great example on this lesson right here, scope management. If you are a beginner, you have no idea how long things take because you've never actually done them. So you need to actually do those things so that in the future, when you are estimating how long game two, game three, game four will take, by then you will have a better idea because you already know, oh, my first game took me this amount of time and had this amount of complexity. So now in the second game, if I want to be a little bit more complex and my skills increase by a little bit, now I have more of a rough idea on how long things should take. Although I should say, no matter how good you think you are at scope management, keep in mind this, it will always take longer than you think. Even for myself right now, I've already made tons of games, I've written tons of lines of code, I've made a ton of stuff, but even so, I do know for a fact that when I think something is going to take some amount of time, I always know it's always going to take longer. So with experience, you definitely do get better at scope management, but always keep in mind there's some kind of human bias, let's say, to always think things take less than eventually they won't take. Second very important lesson is get feedback ASAP. Validate your ideas and make sure players actually want what you're making, assuming you're making games with commercial intent. This is a very important assumption because if you're making games just for fun, just as a hobby, then of course this doesn't really matter. If you're not trying to sell copies, if you're not trying to get a ton of people to play your games, if so, then sure, just make whatever you want, doesn't matter. But if you want to actually sell your games, or if you want to literally just have a bunch of people play your games, if so, then this is very, very important. You need to validate your ideas to make sure players actually want what you're making. And that way, you don't spend years working on something only to later on realize that no one really wants it. That's one thing that you can see if you just look at Steam Analytics. If you see the revenue distribution and how over 50% of games make less than $1,000, meaning they sell basically nothing, so basically nobody plays these games. And some of those, like I said, some of those, those are going to be basically those hobbyist games that were really not made with commercial intent. So it's really not an issue that those made less than $1,000. But amongst these, there are definitely some of those that those developers spent years making that game, all then realize there's actually not an audience for that game. The most common example are 2D platformers. For some reason, in developers are really attracted to 2D platformers. Personally, I don't know why, because I never quite had that feeling. It's really not my favorite genre. 
But a ton of developers make those kinds of games. I guess some developers think they're going to be the next Hollow Knight. But the reality is, this is a very tough genre to find success, again, commercially speaking. You can go on Steam, find the new releases, sort by Metroidvania, and you can see just how many of those are being made. And a lot of these, if you notice, so that one has 70 reviews, that one has 200 reviews, that one has 10 reviews, that one has 22, that one has 115, 26, and so on. So for the most part, relatively small amount of reviews. And some of these games probably took years to make, so developers probably spent a ton of time, a ton of money building these games. In the end, very few people actually want to play them. For example, here's one that looks quite interesting, looks pretty well made. I'm guessing the developers spent more than a few months working on this game. But the final result, 17 reviews at a price point of $10. We can do some quick math, 17 times 40 times $10. So it might have grossed around $7,000. So in terms of net, maybe about $3,000. So unless the developer made this in about one month, chances are it was not a profitable project. Whereas if this developer used their own skills in order to make a game on a more popular genre, something that more people actually want to play, if so, chances are they would be so much more successful using the same amount of effort. Next up is how success is not linear. And it's actually a very interesting one. So I myself learned this the hard way. My first team game made about 100k in the first six months. That was this game right here, Survivor Squad. So this was a strategy action game where you control a squad of up to four survivors and guide them through a highly randomized world, looking for supplies to aid you on your journey. It was a pretty nice game, I definitely did enjoy it. And players for the most part did enjoy it. The review is mixed, really just because I was definitely much more inexperienced back then. So the game is definitely unpolished, but the core concept was interesting, people did like it. However then, for my second game, a sequel that I thought was better in every single way, only made about 20k. So if that was this one, Survivor Squad Gauntlets, this was a direct sequel. I thought the game was better in literally every single way, and yet it literally did not do as well. So a sequel to a successful game with a bunch more effort put in into what I believe to be objectively a better game, but the level of success did not scale with how much effort and how much I think was objectively better. So even though your skills are hopefully improving game by game, you should not take success for granted. You will have hits and misses as you make more and more games. So it's another reason why make more games is great advice. You become less reliant on each individual one being a hit if you publish multiple games. And yeah, back in my Game Dev Journey video, I did talk about exactly that. So back then, I had made eight Steam games, two of them were failures, three of them did pretty good, and three of them did pretty great. So imagine if I had just made one game and my first game for some reason failed, and I had never done the other ones, then I never would have had those three great projects, those three good projects. So really, that's a very practical example on why make more games is a great advice. You always try your best, but you never actually know what the results will be. So if you simply have more games, you have more of a way of basically handling that variation. Another important one is do not over-engineer. Now, as a programmer, I love coming up with clever, complex solutions to problems, but with my experience, I also know that over-engineering, while satisfying, is usually the wrong option. Definitely do write good, high-quality, clean code, but don't overdo it. So if this is definitely a problem that is common to people who are mainly programmers, like myself, which is how it's a lot of fun to make a very modular system, something using interfaces, generics, some that looks really satisfying to use in terms of code. But then you realize when you're making the final game, you really don't have much use for all that modularity, really just something simple would have sufficed. So whenever you're trying to build something, always keep that in mind, keep in mind that balance. Making something super modular is probably going to be super adaptable and very easy to make implementations and extend upon it in the future. But adding that modularity, that will likely increase the amount of complexity in the code which will make other things much more difficult. So that's always a balance you have to strike. Do you go for the simple approach, which you can get done relatively quickly, but then in the future, if you want to extend upon it too much, you might have to refactor quite a bit, or do you go for the complex approach right away, and then in the future, you won't need to refactor a bunch of stuff if you want to expand upon it, but it will take quite a bit of time in the beginning to actually make it. So that really is a trade-off. And now you might be asking, okay, so how do I know which one is the right answer? Do I make something simple or something complex? And the answer to that is really the same thing throughout this entire video, which is simply make more games, write more code. As you gain more experience, being able to decide between those two things becomes much, much easier. Now, the very important thing, launching too fast into early access. Nowadays, early access players are no longer as forgiving as they once were. And if you miss your early access launch, you likely will not have a successful 1.0 launch. So don't treat your early access release like, oh, I'll just launch whatever I have and then keep working on it. This lesson also applies to demos. Players want to play polished experiences regardless if they're demos or early access. And this is definitely something that changed quite a lot in the past few years, I would say. Back in the day, like when the original Kerbal was launched, back then, back in 2015, back then you could launch something into early access that was basically just bare bones experience. Really just had a bunch of mechanics and that was it. It was unpolished and unfocused. Back then you could do that and players would still really enjoy it. But nowadays that is definitely no longer the case. Nowadays if you launch a game that is basically a broken mess that really just has a bunch of features that sort of work, Nowadays, players will not want that. If you do that, either with an early access release or with a demo, you will get a ton of negative reviews. 
and then it's pretty much impossible to get back from that. Nowadays, to have a successful demo or successful early access release, it needs to be extremely polished. It can have a short amount of content, but the content is that, that one needs to be absolutely excellent. One example of that is Thronefall. This one found an insane amount of success through a really excellent demo. And the reason was because the demo was exactly that. It was insanely well polished for a tiny slice of the game. So it didn't have an insane amount of content. It had a short amount, but the short amount that we had, it was insanely well polished. It was insanely satisfying to play. So this is very much a very important lesson nowadays. This is something that did change. If you are trying to follow advice from five years ago, they might say, just go into early access right away. But nowadays, do not follow that advice. Nowadays, whatever you put out, whether it be early access or a demo, needs to be insanely well polished because players will not give you a second chance. And finally, big thing is simply learn marketing. So probably one of the biggest ones for your first game, you will likely only have time or energy to focus on the technical aspect of actually finishing the game. But by game two, you will quickly realize how if you want to find success, it is not enough to focus just on the game. You need to spend almost as much effort on marketing as you do on the game itself. And if this is definitely one of the biggest lessons you will learn if you make just one game and then move on to game two, chances are for your first game, you will do what I said here, which is you will focus just on the technical aspect of actually building the game technically. You will do that whilst leaving marketing as a second afterthought. And as soon as you launch that first game, you will realize just how important marketing is. So hopefully, if you make your second game, by your second game, you will know just how important it is, and you will know to put basically as much effort into marketing as you do into actually developing the game. And if you do that, you massively increase your odds of finding success. This is definitely something that I've learned myself throughout the years. Back in the day when I started making Steam games, back when I made Survivor Squad in 2013, back then, marketing wasn't really a thing. You just launched your game on Steam, and that was basically it. If the Steam audience liked your game, that's it. If they didn't, nope, you won't find success. And for the first few games, that was basically my marketing plan. Literally, no marketing plan at all. Just put the game on scene, hope that people enjoy the idea, and that was basically it. But over time, things have definitely changed quite a bit. And nowadays, for my last game, Think Gardens, that I launched in 23, I definitely had to have an actual marketing plan put into action. And thanks to that, the game did manage to find success. But without that, it definitely would have not found success. Nowadays, if you want that, you definitely do need to take marketing seriously. And if you want to learn about marketing, you can check out all the videos that I made with Chris Sukowski. He's a Steam marketing expert. A lot of what I know about marketing comes from him, so I definitely encourage you to watch this. So yep, let me take this time to encourage you to, once again, make more games, make them small, make them fast. More games equals more learning equals better odds of success in the long term. I can certainly say for myself that I've definitely learned a ton from every single game I've released, 40 Flash games, 9 Steam games. With my Flash games, I learned a massive amount about basic game development and basic game design from game to game. Exploring different genres also made me learn a massive amount. Then dealing with players made me learn what players value. Not every one of my games is a hit, but I've certainly learned a lot from every single one. And like I said, by making more games, I've managed to have a more stable amount of success over the long run. So if I highly recommend you make more than one game, I really hope you don't end up being just another number over here on this first bar. I hope you end up being a number on these other bars. Because again, experience is really so insanely valuable. If you make your second game, by the time you make your second game, you will be so much better. And by the time you make your third game, fourth game, and so on, you will be constantly improving. So definitely don't end up on this one bar. If you make your first game, that's awesome. Learn what you can from it and apply those learnings to game two, three, four, and so on. And doing so, hopefully in the long run, you'll find a lot of success. By the way, I just published my latest free course. It is this one all about learning problem solving. This is the most valuable skill of all. It's a skill that allows you to build literally anything you want to build. You can watch a free video over here on YouTube. It contains a bunch of lectures and the free project files. Then if you want, you can pick up the full premium course. But that's very much an intermediate advanced course. So if you are still a beginner, definitely stick with the basics. For example, my free 12-hour C-sharp course, which will teach you everything about the language from beginner to advanced. Check them out with the link in the description. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.